Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is session four of our children's ministry training and a continuation of our general policies for the classroom. And the focus of this session is on uh, restroom time, as we call it. And so if you would, let's go ahead and uh, get your manual out. And uh, we're going to be on page seven. And yours will look something like this. Restroom time starts about a third of the way down the page and continues on to page eight. So let's go ahead and, uh, and hop right in. So first of all, just kind of a, I don't know, a warning or um, just want to highlight something. And that is um, when we take kids to the bathroom, um, we just want to be really careful about how we handle it. And we have specific policies and procedures in place because it's a sensitive time in that it's a time when uh, the children's um, private parts are exposed or, or whatever. And so we want to be very careful about how we handle this time. And uh, so anyway, just kind of a, a general warning kind of going in. Um, we don't want to take this time lightly. We want to be very careful and deliberate about what we do. And it's to protect the children and their safety. Um, we don't want any misconduct happening to them, but at the same time, we don't want um, there to be any false accusations towards an adult as well. So the policies that we have in place are to try to protect everyone involved. So with that being said, let's just look at some of just our general guidelines. And uh, the first, first one is uh, we want to try to, the plan for taking the kids to the bathroom is we have a set time that we take them. And usually we do it after the worship time. So if the kids are in the worship time and they say they have to go to the bathroom, we want to encourage them to just wait till after the worship time. Um, it won't take long before we get there. Um, very few kids through the years have asked to go to the bathroom during the time of worship. Um, if they are just going to explode, you know, we can make accommodations for that. And we'll use kind of the same procedures or similar procedures uh, that you'll see in just a minute as we hop into it. Uh, but let's just encourage the kids to wait till after the worship time. And then we're going to take the kids all at the same time. Okay, so after worship, we'll dismiss uh, each class uh, individually, and uh, um, the classes will use the restroom. Uh, then, and that's kind of how we uh, will do it. And then just another general guideline is we never want to be alone with the kids, especially in the, in the uh, restroom. Okay. Um, just never is going to happen. Okay. All right. So that's our general guidelines. Let's go ahead and we'll hop in and uh, we'll kind of uh, look at the procedures of how are we going to take kids to the bathroom and how are we going to make sure that we have um, enough supervision so that we're never alone with a kid. One of the policies that we have in children's ministry is what we call our too deep policy. And the idea is is we always want to have at least two people or two adults or two um, people supervising when working with kids, whether it's in the classroom, the worship room, the bathroom, whatever. We want to be at least two deep when it comes to adult supervision. And, um, and so, the, I, again, the idea there is that uh, there's accountability. Um, someone's going to be less inclined to do something foolish to do something inappropriate to a child if there's another adult there watching them. And so that's the idea is it's going to eliminate temptation. It's going to um, uh, provide accountability um, and it's going to protect not just your reputation, but it's also going to tend to um, protect the kids. So looking at this diagram here, this is kind of a layout of the uh, children's ministry area. So you see uh, the worship room and then some classrooms and then kind of where the girls room and boys room is, the hallway, that kind of thing. So we're going to look at kind of what the procedures are for the three-year-olds, kind of twos and threes really. Um, these are going to be kids that um, are just kind of getting potty trained. They're just learning how to use the bathroom. And in, in most cases, they're going to need some assistance in the bathroom. Okay. They're going to need help taking their pants down. They're going to need help being put on the toilet. They're going to probably need some help wiping their bottom or whatever. So this is going to be pretty hands-on with them in the restroom. 
So because of that, we're going to, um, we relegate the twos and threes um, to only females uh, working with them. Okay, so all the kids, uh, boys or girls, are going to go into the girls' room and they're going to be taken care of by women. Okay, so let's look at just kind of a step-by-step -step, um, uh, taking kids to the restroom. First of all, before we even take kids into the restroom, we want to check and make sure that the restroom is safe. And mostly, that would be safe from anyone that looks like um, suspicious or whatever. I just want to just check the restroom and make sure that it's safe for the girls to go in uh, or for the kids to go in. As I mentioned before, with the younger ones here, it's going to be boys and girls, and they're going to go into the girls' room, and uh, they're going to be supervised by uh, ladies only. Okay. So one of the workers is going to be um, kind of in the sink and mirror area, and um, and they'll they'll help the kids as needed to get on the toilet and off and that type of thing. But you don't want to be um, Kind of in the stall with the with the child for you know extended periods of time not being uh, observed by the other adult there so um, just kind of posting up in that area and then the other worker is going to be nearby um, they may be in the bathroom with you or near the doorway uh, just kind of watching listening and uh, just observing to make sure that everyone, everything's being done kind of in a, in an orderly fashion. Nothing inappropriate is happening. <clears throat> so moving to the older kids, um, these kids, four years old and older, they typically know how to use the restroom themselves. They don't need any assistance to get on and off the toilet or that type of thing. So really is more of a hands-off policy with them. And so Girls are going to go into the girls' room. Boys are going to go into the boys' room. So let's go ahead and step into kind of the, the steps here. Um, first of all, same as before, we're going to check the restroom uh, first, make sure it's safe. Um, if there's anyone that looks suspicious or, or whatever, we're going to wait until they, they leave and uh, make sure that it's safe for the kids. All right, as I mentioned, boys are going to go in the boys' room. And we'll have men supervising in there. And then girls will be in the girls' room with women supervising in there. All right. Um, again, the placement, the worker is going to be kind of in the sink area. The door is propped open. And uh, we want it to be where um, uh, you can kind of be seen from the door. You know, So you're kind of moving around a little bit so that you can be seen from the open door. Um, a lot of times what we like to do is put a worker near the doorway so that they can kind of observe um, what's happening. Sometimes we might have limited manpower, so it's kind of important to kind of triangulate. Um, the teachers that are in the hallway kind of in front of the door can be watching the kids, but they can also be watching and seeing what the adult is doing inside the classroom. All right. Um, so that's kind of how we handle it during the time when we're all dismissed together. Um, but there might be an instance where the child is in the classroom and now they have to go to the bathroom. So now what do we do? We're not going to take the entire class out and use the restroom that way. And so let's talk a little bit about how we would handle that. Um, the, the challenge is how do we make sure that we have two adults supervising the kids at all time. And so we'll kind of show you how we do that. We kind of um, use the resources that are available and try to just keep an eye on each other just for accountability and safety. All right, so in this case, uh, what's gonna happen is the teacher is gonna prop their door open and step outside the class. That way they can be supervising their class, but they're not alone in the classroom, okay? Then what's going to happen is the helper is going to try to find the uh, children's ministry pastor or coordinator. Oftentimes, they're sitting in the hallway by the sign-in table, and they're there just for this particular reason, so that if there's assistance needed in the classroom, they're at the ready to do that. Okay, so now what's happening is um, the children's ministry pastor or coordinator um, is going to be 
making sure that we have supervision of the other adult. So um, what will happen next is the, um, the helper or the teacher is going to check the restroom, make sure that everything's safe. They're going to prop the door open, and then they're going to take the children into the restroom. All right, they're going to go kind of uh, in that hand washing area or, you know, that type of thing. Um, and the coordinator or pastor is going to just kind of move between looking in the door, listening to make sure what's happening, and then moving back to the hallway to make sure that the teacher is still outside the classroom and just supervising the kids, but not in alone with the kids. And so this is kind of how we maintain just accountability of, you know, adults watching adults supervise kids. All right. Um, now, there may be a case where the children's ministry pastor or coordinator isn't available. And so what you can do in that case is you can use a neighboring class to, um, to do the same type of thing. So let's look how, let's see how this would work. So what would happen is the teacher would step outside the class and open the door. They're watching their class, but they're not alone with the class. The helper is going to ask the neighboring class for help. Say, hey, we have a kid that needs to go to the bathroom. Um, can you help us take someone, take the child to the bathroom? So in that case, what will happen is the neighboring teacher is going to step outside the classroom. So the two teachers now are kind of observing each other, but they also can keep an eye on the class. Through the door, they can hear what's happening. Through the window, they can see what's happening. And they can kind of step in and out of the class to help supervise the kids. So there's accountability there. They're not alone with the class. Um, they're kind of watching each other. Okay, so then from there, the helpers are going to take the kids to the restroom and the same, same procedure is going to fall in place. They're going to check the restroom and they're going to take the kids to the restroom. Okay, so they'll take them over here. This helper is going to come over here and watch them. And uh, that's kind of how it'll work. All right, so that's how it'll look. Everyone's kind of got an eye on each other. So again, we're not alone with the kids. The kids are supervised. It's safe for the time being. And then we'll get the kid back to the classroom and, and move on with our class. All right, next, uh, next session we'll be looking at what do we do in the classroom itself, and we call that classroom time. So we'll see you in the next session.